So the big question is this, how do investors like us who don't have a PhD in finance or millions to start investing, how do we grow our bank accounts to build real savings in retirements and yet still have the time to do what we really love? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answer. All right. Hey guys, John Wooten here with the Stock Market Secrets Podcast. I'm super, super excited today. We're going to talk about the fundamental things that you need to start getting into the market and why people think that they need so, so, so much and how to overcome those fears, overcome those false beliefs, those objections, those terrible, terrible things that just stop people from getting in when in reality, it's just a couple of very basic tools you need to start trading and crush it in an nine to noon workday. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing I want you guys to get over is that you don't need a lot of money to start, okay? Like, you get a minimum wage job, you work a little bit. I've got an account right now. I just started it with Robinhood because I was finally able to get a hand on my documents and actually create, uh, you know, some real uh, uh, traditional investment accounts because it's just a little bit difficult with, you know, just all the childhood stuff. And there's still a bunch of money trying to get cleared through the banking system because the banking system freaking sucks, guys. That's why cryptocurrencies are the future. It takes 10 years to transfer money anywhere and it costs a whole bunch. Uh, but anyway, I'm putting in a thousand dollars in the account. Guys, that's not a whole lot in the grand scheme, right? Like you can make that work. You can find that. And to think that you can turn that small investment oof, into like a trading account that can literally fund you for the rest of your life. It's just such a ridiculous proposition. It's insane, guys. So first thing is you definitely don't need a whole lot of capital to start. You can make it work. And when you make it work, that's when you're going to have the most impressive results in the marketplace. Because here's the deal, right? It's all based around the significance of the psychological weighting of the money in your mind, right? So if you are putting out and you're risking, you know, every dime that you've ever made, you're going to be pretty scared, right? It's going to be tough to make those initial positions because you definitely need to take on some risk and you definitely have to, um, you know, be willing to lose some of that initial cash, especially in your first couple of trades. I don't think, you know, at least in the, in the past, I've ever opened a brokerage account, I've left a 10 I've had, where the first trade I made was, was, the, was the green trade. Like, I don't know why, I made my luck, and I don't want to drink to you guys, but I have always lost money on my first trade in an account. And it's always a little bit funny because I just realized, hey, you know what? That's what it takes. This is the game we're playing. And you got to understand that you are in it for uh, more than, you know, a couple days. It's long-term stuff, and that's how you make it work because you take advantage of the fact that the market is going to be there every single day to produce those results. And every day it's going to come and it's going to say, hey, you know what? I want to give you some cash. Here's the best stock to play today. And even in that trading challenge on that first day, there was that amazing, amazing, amazing stock that doubled, tripled in a day. I still got screwed out of it. Yeah! And, uh, and like, I, I, I couldn't, I, I count up frozen and all this crap went down. Uh, all because of uh, some of the rules that they had. So, like, even in the perfect world, like, I keep losing money on my first trade. So, please, 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 don't feel bad if your first week of trading sucks because that's okay. That's part of the process. It's not a problem. You're going to get there with time, right? It takes practice. And that's totally cool because that's the important part. Whew. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, Let's go hard and talk about like, what you need for like identification to be a person, okay? Number one thing that you don't have to do and that held so many people I knew back, you don't have to be 18, okay? It's just you don't need it. There are so many amazing ways to open childhood accounts, like UGMA accounts, UTMA accounts. I talk about them in like chapter six and seven, nine to noon. Like these accounts are made specifically so that investors of any age in any position are able to open their accounts and start investing in the marketplace because the younger you start, the larger your portfolio will be at the end of the day, at the end of your period, you know, whatever your, your investing time frame is. So that's super, super, super important is to never let age stop you from starting. I think so many markets right now are ridiculously tough to get into, especially if you're a minor. Can't accept credit cards. You gotta lie by your age on all these websites. The stock market is not like that. And the stock market is not somewhere where you wanna lie. It's just not a good idea. 
there's some super tight regulations. SEC, they will get on you so quickly. They regulate everybody. And because of that, they will take you out if you start lying to them. It's just not a good idea. And at the same time, you can literally just have your parents open an account under their name. Just use your parents' account with your own money so that you have skin in the game and you understand the fundamental buying psychology of what you're doing. And that's gonna give you a leg up over so, so, so many people that just sit there and pay for trade or have fake positions or wait until they're 18. Because I'll tell you what, that marketplace experience is 10 times more valuable than paper trading experience. It's, it's totally, totally uncomparable. What you'll get from a $10 position versus a zero dollar position is, is so different. And that's why starting early is just the key. Okay, we got that down, you got that down? You guys pumped? All right, number three, number three. You have to have 15 monitors and be like a Wall Street pro. Look, here's the deal, guys. The internet is ridiculously amazing, okay? You don't have to be on Wall Street anymore to trade Wall Street. Isn't that insane? Isn't that awesome? You used to have to pick up the phone and call people if you wanted to trade a stock. If you wanted to know what price it was, you had to read the freaking newspaper. Charts, technical analysis, these amazing gateways into financial analysis and portfolio growth were not even an option. They did not exist at the time. They are so amazing. And it's so great to be in a position now where you can use these magic, magical elements of financial markets to your advantage because now you have this amazing, amazing ability to get out there and use this internet technology to find and secure the best possible trades, the best possible positions, to charts, to screeners, through all these amazing, amazing ways in the marketplace that just were not available to so many, so many people before for this time period. And it's amazing. Because now you turn on your computer. You definitely you need a computer. Fast one, or at least a decent one, is recommended. So that at least if you're trading nine to noon, you definitely don't want to get messed up on uh, on your fills. I mean, if you think about it, if you have a $1,000 position and the computer fires off your order 10 seconds slower than every other person in the marketplace, or your charts load 10 seconds slower than every other person in the marketplace, and suddenly a nine to noon stock drops 10%, God forbid, like it's a $1,000 or $10,000 position, like that's 100 bucks, 1,000 bucks, like think of how much that could cost you just having a slower computer. That's slow speed, especially like slow internet, like that's gonna cost you so much money because here's the deal. There are people who make millions of dollars every year and literally all they do is intercept signals that people send to huge, huge, huge uh, centralized order clearing houses. And once the orders get there, they take what they have, they cancel the order, they sell it at a higher price and your market order buys it from them because they're the next person on the level two spread. And the level two spread is just everyone in the marketplace buying and selling and a market order is an order that's going to buy, if, you know, if you're buying, it's going to buy the cheapest price possible instead of setting your own price. So if you use a market order, which you probably shouldn't do in most circumstances, we talk a lot more about it in chapter 19 of the book called Order Types, and we break down exactly when you use market orders. In short, you're usually going to use them in 90 noon positions where you need to get out of a position really, really quickly because those stocks move really, really quickly. But with most other positions, you want to use your limit orders. And those limit orders are going to stay consistent. And the only difference between you and someone else is going to be the time it takes to load up those prices and then get your order sent out. So if you want to have the best possible chance of having the greatest possible price for your entries and your exits, that's when you got to go ahead, get the solid computer, get the solid internet, make it work well. Because if you can make that work well, then your only limitation is yourself. It's all on you. Can't blame markets, markets, no, never the market's fault. Can't blame the technology. It all comes down to your education, your practice, your discipline with trading and psychology, which is amazing. That's the best thing you can do for yourself at the beginning. And also, please, 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 if you're gonna trade nine to noon and you're gonna seriously trade nine to noon, like anything over a couple hundred dollars per position, and there's any, any chance at all 
that you want to be trading the number one stocks for the day, like pretty much bare minimum, you're going to want two monitors, one for screeners and charts, the other one for charts and order boxes. And you can mix them up. You can put everything on one and everything on the other. Um, but I found bare minimum two monitors or one really, really big one. I don't know. I just have two normal sized ones and, and I make them, you just get two of them at the beginning and uh, that's going to separate you. It's going to differentiate you from so many people. And like I said earlier, it's going to change the limit from the computer to you because uh, you're going to be able to see everything that's going on in the market. You're going to be able to apply the screeners that we talk about in chapter 36 from 20 cents to $20, over 5%, over 10% daily gain, high volume, 50,000 minimum after the first 15 or so minutes of trading. And you're going to be able to stream for that. You're going to be able to find them. And you're gonna be able to look at six stocks at the same time and figure out which one of the six is the one that's really gonna be an amazing trade for the day. Use your technical analysis, use your setup, and once you do that, you're gonna be off to the races because you're looking at six times more things than most people. Most people, they have their laptop, they're looking at one stock, maybe two. I hate trading on laptops, guys. You can't look at multiple positions. I've done it before with two laptops where you literally have to have like one on one leg, one on the other, you pull up four charts on each, it's terrible, just don't do it. Get yourself a computer, the right amount of monitors for you, and then use your equipment to its absolute maximum to so go out there and crush it. And that's really about it, guys. It's all about getting in there and getting experience first. The biggest thing to do is overcome the excuses and overcome the fears and overcome the, the idea that you're not ready for. Because I remember when I started learning about stocks it took me months and months probably six months from me figuring out going into google typing in what is the stock market to uh to buying my first position in nvidia to buying my first position in amd to buying my first position in, in qqq and these these the etf tech companies all that stuff and none of that you know should have taken six months literally if i read my book wish i had it back then you know i would have been in there super super quick right uh, uh, but it's okay. You know what? Not a big deal. Now I'm past it. And I'll tell you what, my growth ever since I bought that first stock has been just exponential. There's no question in my mind that the number one growth hack to start just launching your investing, successful investing career immediately is to buy that first investment, sit down for that first nine to noon day and, and make that first day trade. Once you have the quality education, you understand stops, you understand how to not get super messed up. Because once you can do that, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna crush it. Thank you guys so, so, so much. Hope you found this podcast immeasurably valuable. Whew. Whoa, 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 whoa. And have an amazing day. See you later. Want more stock market secrets? If so, go get your free copy of my best-selling book, Nine to Noon. You can get your free copy plus $11,176 of unannounced bonuses. It took me years to uncover completely for free at 9 to secrets.com. Inside 9 to Noon, you'll find the top 38 secrets you can use to double your portfolio every two years and make upwards of 10% per trade daily.